This may not make sense. I ask that you do not immediately shut this out. Watch with an open mind and try to see this in a new way. When you look at the ancients and you see the flower of life symbol, the flower of life pattern, it's pretty interesting because inside of that pattern, I believe that pattern is the face of God. When you look at the flower of life and understand that it's an energy pattern, and when you access those interconnecting circles and the flower of life and you take a look at them, you can fit 64 tetrahedrons with inside the circle uh, laid over top the interconnecting grid. Those 64 tetrahedrons create a vortex or a connecting piece in the middle that is called a vector equilibrium. And within that vector equilibrium, you have an unlimited source of unparalleled energy. And that flower of life symbol, that energetic symbol, where the crosses of those circles meet is called the Vesica Pisces. It's known as the womb of life. It's where all energy emanates into the third dimension to create the reality that we're seeing here. This symbol exists at every Planck unit in space-time that exists throughout the entire known universe. And it's the source of energy and it's the source of the vibration for everything that exists in this in the known universe that in my opinion is the face of god everything in the universe is geometric whether it's people trees cats planets solar systems or stars you name it anything in the universe can be measured on a geometric scale having said that it's important to note that creation is also geometric the ancient egyptians and even older civilizations had a deeper basic understanding of the universe this is represented by the flower of life which is also the creation pattern of everything in existence even non-tangible things like emotions thoughts and music across its entire Entire spectrum. Everything comes from this image. Also, I want to tell you that by learning about sacred geometry simply by observing, you are absorbing only a very minuscule amount of information. If you really want to learn more, you must begin to draw it yourself. When you do this, you begin to see things in a new way. You begin to understand why things are done the way they are. This is one of the oldest symbols in um, human history, right? This symbol was found in the Temple of Osiris in Egypt and it had been molecularly burned into the wall. And it's 6,000 years old. This, this same symbol has been found in the forbidden temples in China, sitting under the fufu dogs. And the foot on it, the flower of life, saying whoever controlled that flower of life controlled the universe. There were secrets in that flower of life that da Vinci spent his whole life trying to uncover. There were secrets in that flower of life that Newton spent his whole life in secret trying to uncover. They were trying to find a way to bring this flower to life because what is inside of it? Well, apparently there were secrets inside of it. The flower of life was known around the world in ancient times. It has been found in Ireland, Turkey, Israel, Egypt, China, Greece, Germany, India, Iceland, and many other places, always known by the same name, the flower of life. To understand the flower of life, we first need to explore its formation. Imagine consciousness or spirits existing in an absolute void surrounded by endless darkness. In this nothingness, a spirit chooses to act, expanding its awareness outward to its maximum reach without physical movement, forming a sphere around itself. This sphere represents the first circle of the flower of life. Now aware of its surroundings in every direction, the spirit moves to the very edge of this sphere and repeats the initial expansion, creating a second overlapping circle. This overlap forms the Vesica Pisces, a shape rich with profound insights into dimensions, proportions, and the mathematical relationships of the square roots of 2, 3, and 5, numbers that extend infinitely. Intriguingly, this formation also encodes geometric information about light. As the spirit proceeds, moving seamlessly, it continues to create additional circles each positioned precisely one radius away from its neighbor. With every movement, the spirit unfolds more intricate layers of knowledge through the evolving pattern. The initial complete design that emerges from this process is known as the Seed of Life or the Genesis Pattern, a name that resonates deeply with its origins. Turning to the book of Genesis for a moment, each act of the spirit, each new circle, mirrors a day of creation. The second sphere's emergence not only elucidated mathematical proportions, but also brought the concept of light into focus. Genesis begins with the world formless and empty, with the Spirit of God hovering over the waters. It is immediately after this that God commands, let there be light. The movement precedes the creation of light, echoing the spiritual and physical Genesis described in the sacred text. The mention of waters in Genesis is intriguing, especially 
considering how interpretations of sacred texts have evolved over time. Historical changes in the Bible might lead to different understandings from ancient perspectives, such as those of the Egyptians, who might argue that the depiction of creation as presented in modern interpretations is not feasible, especially from a scientific standpoint. Imagine being suspended in a dark, boundless void that stretches infinitely in all directions. In such a scenario, the concept of falling doesn't apply. There's nowhere to fall to. From a physics and mathematics perspective, the idea of motion or kinetic energy in a complete void is fundamentally problematic. Without the presence of another object to provide a frame of reference, you couldn't even rotate, as motion requires a relational context to exist. This thought experiment underscores the complexity and sometimes the contradiction between ancient texts and modern scientific understanding. So the ancient Egyptians would say that before God moved upon the face of the waters, it would first have to create something to move relative to. Thus, after three spheres, you get the Holy Trinity. Another interesting point, many Bibles of the world, not just the Christian Bible, state that on the fourth day of Genesis, exactly one half of creation was completed, starting from the first motion. On the fifth day of Genesis, the sixth circle forms more information, and then on the sixth day, a geometric miracle takes place. The last circle forms a complete six-petal flower. This is what many earlier Bibles meant when they said, in the beginning, there were six. Our Bible even said creation was formed in six days, and this fits exactly. This is the pattern of Genesis, and so it's called the Genesis pattern. It's also the beginning of the creation of the universe that we live in. Man being, you know, related to the number six. Well, that makes me immediately think of the hexagram, right? Which is the Star of David or Metatron's cube, or there's so many different names for this, right? We, and it's not just in in Judaism, it shows up everywhere, literally shows up everywhere. But when I start thinking about the six and your point, I think of Metatron's cube. I think of the Vitruvian man, also by Leonardo da Vinci, because that's also mm -hmm. tied to the same thing. And within six point perspective, you can create all geometric forms. Another image that comes out of this pattern is this. It's called the tree of life. Many may recognize this as the Jewish or Hebrew Kabbalah, but the Kabbalah did not originate this image, and there is proof. The Tree of Life does not belong to any culture, not even the Egyptians, who carved the Tree of Life on two sets of three pillars at Karnak Temple in Luxor over 6,000 years ago. It's outside any race or religion. As with all of these images, there are patterns that are intimately connected with nature. You'll also notice that every circle on the Tree of Life is the usual length or width of the Vesica Pisces. And that has offshoots in other traditions, like what in the Daskalos tradition in Cyprus is called the Symbol of Life, which is based on the same basic pattern. And this is a more complex pattern of 10 energy centers in the body and their energy pathways of connection. As we're looking at this next deeper aspect of studying structure, we can look for these types of geometric structures. But that's easiest once you've actually learned what these geometric structures are and what they signify. And that's best done through a higher level type of sacred geometry education that is based on initiation. When it's based on initiation work, Sacred geometry becomes what the Rosicrucians refer to as learning to read the secret script, because these are the actual archetypes or patterns that everything in our world is based on, and they connect us in higher level initiation work to directly perceiving the thought forms from the mind of God that lay down all of these patterns. The second image beyond Genesis in the Flower of Life is the Egg of Life. The Egg of Life is the name given to the second iteration in the process of construction of the Flower of Life. What are the meanings of the Seed of Life and also the Flower of Life? Now the Egg of Life is sitting right in between. So it's the second stage where the seed of life becomes the egg of life to then become the flower of life. The egg of life holds a lot of wisdom within itself and is often associated with meanings of creation and fertility. The egg of life also represents harmony and balance. You probably won't believe me just yet, but this shape is the morphogenetic structure that created your body. Your entire physical existence is dependent on the egg of life structure, and everything about you was created from that form. This is a whole lesson on its own, so let's move on for now. All around the world, the flower of life was always made the exact same way. However, they always, always stopped after 19 circles. Why? Well, because they didn't want you to see what I'm about to show you. Back then, this image and knowledge was so sacred that they couldn't allow it to become common knowledge. It was appropriate at that time. In biology, all cells have a zona pellucida around the edge. These circles around the flower of life are the zona pellucida of the flower of life. 
You must remove these, then complete the spheres that were cut off by the Zona Pellucida. With one more step, you will have the secret. Finish the drawing. Add the final missing circles, giving you this. This image is the fruit of life. This pattern of 13 circles is one of the holiest, most sacred forms in existence. It's called the fruit because it is the result, the fruit from which the fabric of the details of reality were created. It is all about male and female energy. When you combine male lines with these female circles, something amazing happens. What what you do is draw a straight line from the very center of every single circle to every other circle in this image. When you do this, you get an image which is known throughout the universe everywhere as Metatron's Cube. It is one of the most important informational systems in the universe, one of the basic creation patterns in existence. Anyone who has studied sacred geometry, or even regular geometry for that matter, knows that there are five unique shapes in the universe, and that they are crucial to understanding both regular and sacred geometry. They are called the platonic solids. A platonic solid has certain characteristics by definition. First of all, all of its phases are the same size. For example, a cube, the most well-known platonic solid, has a square on every face, so all of its phases are the same size. Secondly, the edges of the platonic solids are all the same length. All edges of the cube are the same length. Third, it only has one size of interior angles between the faces. In the case of the cube, this angle is 90 degrees. And fourth, when put inside of a sphere, all of the points will touch the edge of the sphere perfectly. With that definition, there are only four shapes besides the cube that fit that description. And it could be that, you know, Plato got all of this information, who knows, uh, from the Egyptian mystery schools. We know he went, we know Socrates went to the Egyptian mystery schools, but the Egyptian mystery schools didn't want to be quoted anyway, so we're thankful at least to the Greeks for having left records for us to basically find. But what's interesting about it is the platonic solids are, you know, it starts with a tetrahedron. A tetrahedron is a shape that would be an equilateral triangle into a three-dimensional object, so four sides of equilateral triangle, right? Then you have a, a cube. You know, a cube would be six sides of a square, right? And, and then you have uh, an octahedron. So the way that would get formed is you would take the center point of a square and connect the center points of each of those six sides. And it creates a shape that looks like a pyramid and an inverted pyramid, right? Attached to it. Then you've got an icosahedron, you've got a dodecahedron, and then some would argue an icosi-dodecahedron, which would be the combination of the two. Because again, if you took an icosahedron, which is supposed to be the structure of water clusters, take the center point of it and attach all of those and connect the dots of it, you'd have a dodecahedron. So one is part of the other, without a doubt. How is it that every single form that's regular in the universe, regular meaning it only has, like a dodecahedron, it has basically 12 sides of pentagons. So perfect pentagons, they're regular pentagons. How is it that all forms of life are based on these structures? Plankton is the exact shape of a dodecahedron. Every single shape that exists in the universe in regular form can be made inside of, without any measurements whatsoever. I don't need to measure anything. I can make all of those forms perfectly in perspective geometry inside of the Star of David, inside of the Merkaba. To me, that implies a level of design that is so far beyond anything we could ever have constructed. And it implies a an architect behind all of it. This knowledge is also where original alchemy came from. The ancient alchemists and great souls like Pythagoras, father of Greece, considered each shape to have an elemental aspect to them. The tetrahedron was considered fire, the cube was earth, the octahedron was air, the icosahedron was water, and the dodecahedron was ether. Ether, also known as prana and tachyon energy, are all the same thing. They extend anywhere and are accessible at any point in space-time and dimension. This is the great secret secret of zero-point technology. The sphere is voidness. These six elements are the building blocks of the universe, and they create the qualities of the universe. In summary, we begin with the fruit of life, which via Metatron's cube unfolds into the first informational system. Alchemy touched on this sparingly, particularly on the subject of ether. The Pythagoreans held the dodecahedron, a platonic solid, so sacred that mentioning it outside their school could mean death. 
Plato later spoke of it, albeit cautiously, due to its significance as it relates to the outer energy field and represents the highest form of consciousness. Fast forward to modern science, where the geometric relationships of the periodic table of elements were overlooked until the 1980s. That's when Professor Robert Moon from the University of Chicago demonstrated that the elements align with the five platonic solids. This insight linked all physical matter to these sacred geometric forms, redefining fields like physics, chemistry, and biology. The egg of life, another geometric pattern, underscores the foundational role of these shapes in understanding the universe. Every element in the periodic table corresponds to one of these five shapes, supporting the idea that ancient geometric patterns are integral to our understanding of the universe. This culminates in the recognition that everything, from the elements to the reality we experience, is interconnected through these sacred forms originating from Metatron's cube, derived from the fruit of life, emerging from the flower of life created by spirits. To me, unequivocally, there is definitely a God. And we have a purpose for being here. Thank you for watching. If this video resonated with you or added value, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. Until next time, keep listening, keep growing, and keep shining. Stay blessed.